good day to the students in uh, U.S. to 1865. The purpose of this PowerPoint and the uh, video, uh, voiceover video explaining some of it, is to go over the syllabus. Uh, we did this in class on the first day of class, but uh, I have some students who are uh, taking this class uh, virtually, and the uh, attempt to uh, record that class uh, failed. So I am making this uh, primarily for their benefit, but some of the rest of you might want to go over it again. I do explain a few things about the Hollitz assignments that you might benefit from uh, looking at this. Um, in the syllabuses, the the first material uh, in the syllabus is pretty much just uh, standard uh, material of, uh, you know, uh, the name of the class, uh, where it is, uh, the department, my office hours, my office, um, which I guess maybe I don't really see there that it's in there, but my office is uh, Lingstead 215, uh, and the number of credit hours. So most of that is pretty standard. Uh, some personal instruction uh, material on me, I guess here that you have my office hour or my uh, office location uh, and my phone number. Uh, you can feel free to call me at home at a reasonable time. Uh, however, when the new TV schedules come out for the fall, don't call me during American Housewife. I have to pay very close attention to that course, that show. Uh, sometimes on my office hours, I may be doing them by virtually uh, where you can call me, email me, or if you really need interaction, you can set up a Zoom meeting uh, personally. Also, uh, if you come to my office, uh, we can't hardly get six feet apart. So if you need to talk to me, you might be able to stand outside the door a little ways, or uh, we could go somewhere else and uh, set at the proper distance, or uh, maybe even go outside where we could take our masks off. The textbooks are listed here. Uh, the main thing you need right away is Hollitz's book, Thinking Through the Past. A critical thinking approach to U.S. history. Anytime you're ordering books uh, online, uh, the uh, ISBN number is very important because that is unique to that book. If you have that book, if you have that number correct, there's virtually no chance you're going to get the wrong book. Um, so uh, if you haven't ordered your books yet, use that number. Now, the Rebecca Edwards book, I have a few old copies of that, uh, including some that uh, go back far enough that Edwards is not listed as the main author. Those would probably be good enough for you to use in this class, and I will give them to anybody that shows up uh, first come, first serve. Now, the objectives of the course, by the end of the course, you should have a general knowledge of the sources, ideals, and major developments in the history of the United States through the time of Reconstruction. Now, actually, we probably won't get through Reconstruction. Um, in some colleges, part one of U.S. goes up to the end of Reconstruction, which is the period after the Civil War and is usually said to end in 1877. Um, we will end with 1865, the end of the Civil War. Some of the things you should learn in this class is to be able to read historical materials intelligently, to ask significant questions, and to express your understanding through uh, the papers you write and through quizzes and exams. Additionally, you should learn some critical thinking skills which will benefit you probably far more than the history you learn in this class. You know, in five years, it doesn't matter if you remember when John Tyler was president, but if you've learned to think about what you read and reflect critically and be able to uh, express those reflections, that's very important. Uh, one of the greatest compliments I ever had from a student was, uh, 
she didn't say it directly to me, but uh, expressed it to someone else, said, uh, I learned to think in Dr. Joy's classes. Well, that's uh, more important than learning history. Now, the only homework you have in this class, except for uh, reviewing for exams when we come up to those, your only homework that you'll be turning in are the writing assignments from the Hollitz text. And uh, the day that those assignments are due, we will discuss them in class as well. So in each chapter that's assigned in Hollitz, uh, there are a set of questions that you're to answer. And so you write answers to those. I want about a, a good full paragraph for each question. And basically that means the, the part of the question that's in, primary, or is, that's in bold type. Uh, think of the rest of the question as just kind of further explaining what he is asking you. Uh, and you should write a good full paragraph for each of those questions. You don't have to go real long on these. Then I also want you to write two questions of your own that you can throw out during discussion. Uh, you don't have to write an answer to your own discussion question. Sometimes there is no, you know, one clear answer to a discussion question. That's what it, that's what makes it a good question. These assignments must be written in standard college level English. And uh, if they're not, your grade will suffer. Uh, they, they have to be typed, including those discuss those questions you write yourself. Because as I said in class, uh, if you don't, if those aren't typed, that's usually a sign they were done at the last minute and you might as well have skipped them because they're not worth turning in and you're not going to get credit for them. Now you do turn these in in class. You bring your printed paper to class and turn it in at the end of class. You do not turn them in. Uh, via my UJ unless uh, we all have to go back to uh, uh, virtual classes. Now, uh, we will have three exams in this class. One of them comes about one third of the way through the semester, the second one at two thirds, and then the final. The exams are not cumulative, meaning that the material covered in one exam will not repeat, not be repeated on the others. Uh, it's important, though, to keep chronology in mind. For example, after we've done the first exam, uh, people and events that showed up in that exam are not going to be on the later ones, except a few exceptions. There'll be people occasionally who bridge the time between one exam and another. But uh, it is interesting. You know, I often get on the last, on the final, which usually deals with uh, maybe the last 20 years uh, between uh, like uh, 1845 and 1865, I will sometimes get George Washington as an answer. Well, he's been dead a long time by that point, so he's not the answer to any uh, question on that exam. I will give you some review before each exam. Uh, at this point, I'm still trying to decide the exams may be in class or they may be ones that you do on your own, and they will be uploadable to my UJ. Now, I want to talk a little bit about um, the first two chapters of Hollitz. Those two chapters are different than all of the rest of the chapters in that book. Uh, and those first two chapters are the first two assignments. Uh, chapter 1 on Friday, September 7, and Chapter 2 on Wednesday, September 16. Now remember, after the first exam, uh, we, we don't use all the chapters in this book. So never assume that the next chapter is the next assignment. Always look at the schedule I've given you, and uh, on my UJ, it will spe specify which chapter is each assignment under coursework. So don't turn in the wrong paper because you're going to be doing another one then uh, to uh, make up. Now, the first chapter is different because uh, it is just excerpts from three different textbooks written at different times. And each expert or each excerpt 
deals with the interaction of the early European settlers with Native Americans. Now, in chapter two, it is different because uh, it is a collection of primary sources. There, there are no textbook excerpts and there's no essay by a modern historian. Primary sources are sources from the time that you're studying. Uh, and these are all from Puritan New England, the, basically the 1600s to the very early 1700s. Secondary sources are books or essays written by later historians about a time period that they did not necessarily live through. Although, obviously, when I teach part two of US history, I have lived through uh, what seems like an awful lot of that probably to you at my advanced age. Now, in chapter two, you don't have to refer to every source in every answer. And in fact, if you do, that's a sign of poor work because it means you're not even noticing that not all of those sources are relevant to each question. Uh, you, should, uh, you should be able to see that. Uh, what you want to note, though, is um, look at outliers, uh, things that don't fit with the others. If most of the sources seem to say one thing, uh, are there others that, that have a different viewpoint? And think about why then. How do you account for one or more sources being very different? Now, after we get through those chapters, the rest of the chapters in Hollitz all are similar. They will have an essay by a modern historian, either someone from the 20th, 20th or 21st century, and then there will be some primary sources. Hollis does not necessarily mean that these primary sources were ones that were used by the author of the essay. Now, when you get into those chapters, if you are referring to something from the text, be sure you show an awareness of whether you are quoting or indirectly citing the essay or one of the primary sources. Always. Uh, show an awareness of what kind of material. Also, uh, don't cite something in Hollitz's introduction and say that the author of the essay said that. Um, also, um, anything that you quote or cite out of the book, you don't need any notes to it. You can put just a, a uh, put the page number in parentheses right by your citation. Uh, we're all reading the same thing, so I don't need to know, uh, you know, the whole bibliographic thing about Hollitz's book. Now, here's a hint. In many of those later chapters where you have an essay and then you have some primary sources, there'll be a question about, um, do the primary sources support the point being made by the author of the essay? may not be exactly in those words, but it'll be something like that. And what that means is when you read the primary sources, do, you do they make you think that the author of the essay was generally correct in his or her arguments? Or do the primary sources make you think, uh, no, it, it's not uh, that important, or it's not, it doesn't support the essay. It, it makes you, it raises doubts about the, the uh, um, material. Now, here's a hint. The answer is usually some of both. Probably most of the sources will, will make you think, yeah, the, the author of the essay uh, understood sources like this, and uh, that's reflected in their essay. Sometimes, though, you'll read one, you think, well, you know, it doesn't seem like the author ever heard of something like what is said in this primary source. So keep that in mind. Now, lastly, uh, remember anything that's in the syllabus or not there that you think you need to know, you can always talk to me uh, after class. After class is usually better than right before. Uh, you can always come to my office or you can always email me uh, we're told students don't like email, but I love email, uh, so email me. Uh, you can come to my office. You don't necessarily need to email me for an appointment if your 
coming during my office hours because I should be here. And if I'm not, I'm usually pretty good about letting everybody know about that. Well, how do you do well in this class? Uh, you attend regularly and pay attention. You know, you, you can come and set through the class, especially uh, since we're in the auditorium there. I don't know what you're doing back there. You might be looking at your phone the whole class. Well, you were there, but you probably didn't absorb much and you probably won't do well, very well on the exam. Take notes. History is a written discipline. There is no way around it. You have to read historical material. And when I talk about things, you should take notes. Now, I often will have outlines, but don't assume that everything you need to know is on that outline. Do your homework, which is the Hollitz writing assignments. Do them well and get them in on time and then review for the exams. I have noticed in past years that um, our students are probably, uh, I'm sure they actually are better than we've had in the past. Most of you are fairly bright. However, a lot of times, for example, most people do the first assignment in Hollis and don't really have any problem with it. They are able to do something like but a lot of times they blow the first exam because high school has been dumbed down to the point where you don't have to study. Uh, if you don't do well on an exam, you get a retake. Well, there's no retakes in my classes. So uh, review. And uh, if you need help with that, I can uh, talk to you about it or we could even set up a session for uh, the whole class. Well, that's all I uh, need to say about this. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. So good night and good luck.